So today I'm talking about a P0365 code, what it is and how you go about fixing it. And so what is a P0365 code? Well, it's a camshaft position sensor B circuit bank one. And what does this mean? Well, basically there's a camshaft position sensor or sensors. There could be more than one. And it's basically just monitoring the camshaft as it spins. And it's reporting this information back to the computer. And the computer uses this information for timing the engine. But when you get a P0365 code, the computer's seeing that this sensor is having some kind of problem, that there's some kind of issue going on with it. And so it's going to have to be troubleshooted to know why. And if you have a V6 or V8 engine, there's going to be two banks on the engine. Bank one is always the side of the engine with the number one cylinder. So if you find the number one cylinder on your engine, that's going to be bank one. And then the opposite of that is going to be bank two. And with this P0365 code, bank one is going to be the side of the engine the computer seeing a problem with. And so what would be some possible causes of a P0365 code? Well, the first thing that could cause this is a bad camshaft position sensor. It might have just gone bad and just need to be replaced. There's some different ways to go about testing the camshaft position sensor. There's some good videos on that. But the first thing that could cause this is a bad camshaft position sensor. Some people, when they get this code, they automatically go change out that camshaft position sensor, which may or may not work. One thing to know about these camshaft position sensors or crankshaft position sensors is that depending on the vehicle, sometimes there's what's called a relearn procedure. It's where the computer needs to relearn the small variances that could be inside of the sensor. And if your vehicle does have this where it needs to do a relearn, then there's some different ways to go about doing that. Quite often, you just need to drive the vehicle and the computer automatically relearn. Sometimes there's like a procedure where you have to drive like 10 miles per hour and then stop and then drive like 20 miles per hour for a mile and then stop. So you can look up your specific vehicle and camshaft relearn procedure to know if there is one. If you have a good OBD2 scan tool, quite often they'll have a feature in there where they'll do an automatic relearn for you. These type of scan tools are often the more expensive ones. But if you have a good scan tool, quite often they have this option built into them. Sometimes you can't just swap out that sensor and the vehicle will run okay, and then other times it won't. It's just going to vary. But just keep in mind that if you do swap out that camshaft position sensor, sometimes there is what's called a relearn procedure. The next thing that could cause this is some kind of issue going on inside the wiring, like an open, a short, it's got a bad connection or something like this. Basically, keep in mind, anything wrong with that wiring is going to cause the same symptoms as a bad sensor. Depending on the vehicle, there could be two wire sensors or three wire sensors or even four wire sensors. It's going to vary, so you will need to get schematics for your particular vehicle to know for sure what's going on. It's very common to have these three wire ones. Basically, what's going on with these is, is that one pin is going to have a ground, one pin is going to have power, and then every single time a piece of metal is directly in front of that sensor, it's going to send a signal back to the computer, which can track this, and it can calculate the timing of the engine. Like I said, be sure to get a schematic for your particular vehicle to know for sure what's going on inside that wiring. But the next thing that could cause this is some kind of issue inside of the wires. Also keep in mind that there's a blowing fuse. This is going to also cause problems. Usually if a fuse has blown, then there's going to be some kind of wiring issue that caused the fuse to blow. But it can vary. It could depend on the problem or what's going on. But the next thing that could cause this is a blowing fuse. And the next thing that could cause this is timing components on bank one, that there's some kind of issue going on there, that the timing belt or timing chain slipped, or the chain tensioner is not holding it tight, and so it's throwing everything off. So these timing belts and timing chains, they all have marks on them. And all these marks need to line up or it's going to throw the timing off. It's going to cause issues. If a belt or chain slips and this notch is a little bit before or a little bit after where it's supposed to be, then it's going to throw off that bank and it's going to cause problems. Another thing that happens with these timing chains and timing belts sometimes is that when they get old and they have a lot of miles on them, they can get loose and stretched out. And this can throw things off. It could throw off that timing just a little bit and cause problems. Also, if there's any kind of issue going on with the tensioner that holds everything tight, then that's going to cause very similar issues because this belt or timing chain need to be tight. And if it's not, then that's also going to throw everything off. But the last thing on the list is going to be that there's some kind of issue going on with one of the timing components. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of how you go about fixing a vehicle with the P0365 code. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.